Hey y'all, and welcome to Politibrol. My name is Brian, and these CNN hosts nearly malfunction when reporter reveals that Trump is being treated like the sitting president during his visit to Georgia and hopefully soon to North Carolina. But before we dive in, I want to give a quick shout out to our great sponsors over at Colonial Metals Group. They quite literally have the cure to Biden inflation and Harris economics, but more on that later. Now, let's dive in. Former President Trump is talking about how politics don't matter, but clearly they do uh, when you have a swing state that is so important being affected by such a big storm. We know that FEMA has uh, already deployed some satellites for Starlink connectivity uh, to the region. And you hear Trump trying to create a sense of the Biden administration hasn't really done much to help out. He's made some baseless claims about that. We know the president has approved an emergency declaration days ago in, in Georgia. Tell us what you're seeing here and what the Trump campaign is saying. Yeah, well, look, this is a red state. and Donald Trump is being treated as a principal here. He is being treated not just as a former president, but almost as though he is a sitting president. As Boris, you just noted, getting a briefing from FEMA, getting a briefing from the National Guard, that is not something that is typically just offered to a candidate. They are treating him as though he is a former president who is there to help. And one thing that I had noticed earlier during our 1 p.m. conversation was that Donald Trump did not have that much to offer in terms of resources since he is not a sitting president. But I will note that he and the campaign say that they have arrived in that area with trucks full of supplies that they plan on giving out. So there is something there for them to offer. He also said that he had a tanker truck full of gasoline, which obviously, if you've ever covered one of these storms, you understand that one of the first things and hardest things to come by is gasoline. So he said that he was going to be giving that out. He is clearly taking this seriously as a politician is on the ground trying to show that he is there in support of the people on the ground in Georgia. And of course, this comes as while well. he is, again, offering a message of unity. He has spent the last several days slamming Kamala Harris, his rival, for not being on the ground, for not helping with this storm. And I do want to point out what you said was very interesting about the Starlink. FEMA, yes, has been doing that. But Donald Trump taking it to another level, saying he's going to personally have a conversation with Elon Musk, which does matter, given what we know about their relationship, trying to insert himself there to say that he has the efforts, he has the resources to actually help people on the ground. That is absolutely shocking that FEMA is actually dealing with Donald Trump a little bit more than Kamala Harris or Joe Biden. I wonder why that is. Hmm. It's almost as if one man is just mentally incapable of handling pretty much anything at this point. I, basically, Jill Biden is running the White House right now, and it's been that way for months but, uh, yeah, no wonder FEMA's not really dealing with him. And furthermore, the controversy with Joe Biden is they're finding out that, uh, yeah, he's authorized all these things to go to these areas, but they haven't uh, been moving out yet. Uh, he's quite literally giving an order on the backhand saying, don't give him this stuff just yet. Now, that's either because the states are saying we don't know how to allocate this yet, or he's withholding it on purpose for political reasons. Either way, that's kind of gross and just speaks to the gross incompetence of our government on every single, excuse me, on every single level. Then there's the idea that maybe he's holding it out uh, for Kamala Harris to do something heroic and stunning as she has a photo op of her signing something while being on the phone on Air Force Two. Yeah, she's not visiting these areas. That's not going to happen. All right, th this is George Bush having a flyover uh, of New Orleans level bad optics, okay? Hey, y'all. I'm not exactly looking at retirement anytime soon, but my parents are, and friends of my parents are, and I'm sure either you or someone you know is looking at retirement and wondering, what do I do? How do I help prepare for this in this economy with this terrible president and with a vice president who basically coup d'etat him and is now looking to run for president herself? How do you protect against this? Well, simple. You go over to my friends at Colonial Metals Group. They quite literally have something called the Retirement Package Plan. This plan backs your wealth with gold and silver accounts. And furthermore, you will have direct access to these accounts. So you're not at the whims of Wall Street. You're not at the whims of inflation. You are in command of your own destiny. 
As a bonus, qualified applicants can receive up to $10,000 in free silver, plus a couple of other little goodies that they're going to package up for you, and you're going to be able to protect your wealth and your retirement. So go over to this link in the description below at colonialmetalsgroup.com, or call this number 800-203-0422 and see how they can help you prepare for retirement today by backing your account with gold and silver. Don't delay your retirement, folks. Protect the money that you earned with Colonial Metals Group. They're here to help. What has happened in North Carolina and in Tennessee and in Georgia and in the Florida Panhandle? Y'all, there is a, you can quite literally carve out this swath of devastation from this hurricane. And it wasn't just a hurricane, too. That area had been, uh, particularly in North Carolina, Tennessee, and North Georgia, had been receiving rain for a couple of days before the hurricane even uh, showed up. And these two low pressure systems ended up merging, and that's why the flooding got so bad. However, the models constantly showed that North Carolina and the and East Tennessee, great, basically the Great Smoky Mountains region, was going to receive a ton of rain, and no one was really pre uh, prepared for it. That's because it's so unusual to get these massive rain events. This is like a 100-year flood, and I've actually been through a 100-year flood uh, back home in Georgia. And it's weird to see the suburban areas uh, flooding because those are usually mitigated and managed. We don't have that ability in the rural areas because we're just not they're just not used to it out there. And so you have entire towns that are just buried under water and now mud. The death count is catastrophic. It's in the hundreds and it's climbing. Uh, this, this is going to be truly catastrophic uh, when it's all said and done and we figured out just how much damage has occurred. My heart goes out to the people of North Carolina, East Tennessee, and of course, South Georgia and the Panhandle. And the Panhandle got wrecked with the winds, but there, there was also the storm surge as far away as Tampa that made things just a, just a nightmare scenario. One of the worst storm surges they had ever seen. And you mean to tell me that a candidate for president is caring more about these things than the sitting president and his vice president who is running for higher office? This is insane. Just absolutely bona fide insane. Our president needs to be in this region. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. However, maybe our president is in the region, our once and future president, so to speak. Trump actually cares about this region. Trump actually cares about American people. And because these Southerners don't typically like Kamala Harris, because they don't typically like Joe Biden, there's good reason to suspect that the federal government under Joe Biden and now under Kamala Harris is holding out. I firmly believe that. This is different than Katrina back in 2005. In 2005, the Democrat governor and the Democrat mayor basically said to the federal government, no, we can handle this, we're good. Yeah, then the levees broke. There, there was a great PBS special in 2004 saying, hey, these uh, levees, if a Category 3 hurricane strikes it at just the right angle, New Orleans is going to flood. And they took no steps to prepare for this. And then 20 years later, a major hurricane has just enough power to dump rain after rain after rain up in the Smokies and flood everything. You think we would have learned, but our federal government refuses to do so. Our federal government is just completely incapable of handling these massive problems. And now they're just basically sitting on this aid, whereas one president, or at least a former president and candidate, is at least showing up in the South. Donald Trump got a standing ovation at the Alabama UGA game. <laughs> and compare that to uh, the running mate for Harris, uh, Tim Walls, he could barely get people to recognize him when he uh, waltzed into the Minnesota-Michigan game. This is this should show what is going to happen in 2024. What's going to happen with this upcoming election? A lot of it now rides on the response to this horrific, catastrophic hurricane, and we have a sitting president and his and his chosen candidate, well chosen, basically sitting on the sidelines. Whereas Donald Trump is at least in the region trying to garner support for this area. Appalachia is hurting. That's a big reason why J.D. Vance is on the Trump ticket. And meanwhile, we have an entire party that's ignoring it. That is just sad.
Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed that segment here on Politibro. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. And until then, y'all have a good one.